Louis Michel Thibault September 28, 1750, November 15, 1815, was a French-born South African architect and engineer who designed numerous buildings in the Cape Colony. He was South Africa's first trained architect and brought with him a distinctive mannered neoclassicism. Life and career Born September 28, 1750 in Picquigny, Picardy in France, Thibault was trained at the Royal Academy of Architecture in Paris. At the time, the academy under Angie Jacques Gabriel, provided the best architectural training available. Gabriel was an architect in the classical tradition, and had an important formative influence on Thibault's style. After qualifying at the academy, details of the next few years of Thibault's life are unknown. It is known, however, that he studied military engineering in Paris under the sponsorship of Colonel Charles Daniel de Murin. Cape under Dutch occupation to 1795 the Swiss mercenary de Murin regiment in the service of the Dutch East India Company, arrived in Cape Town on January 7, 1783 with Lieutenant Thibault among them, only to re-embark almost immediately on the Hermione to Ceylon where they were to assist French Admiral Souffron. Ceylon had been under Dutch rule since 1665, but in the latter part of the 18th century, the British began to move eastward from India. In Ceylon, the de Murin regiment took part in the expulsion of the British from Cuddalore, which had been occupied by the English under General Stuart. Two other regiments, the Regiment de Pondicherry and the Mercenary Legion of the Prince of Luxembourg, were posted at the Cape and landed in Cape Town in April 1782 by order of Admiral de Suffron to reinforce the resistance of France's Dutch ally and prevent their mutual enemy, Britain, from capturing the Cape. After peace in Ceylon, the de Murin regiment shared garrison duty with the Regiment de Pondicherry, in Cape Town. On August 5, 1785 he transferred to the Dutch East India Company, retaining his rank, and in February 1786 was appointed company building inspector under Captain Sebastian Willem van de Groff, son of the governor. In August 1786 he was chosen to direct the school of cadets started by the governor, his duties included being professor of mathematics and military science. Thibault settled in a place that came to be known as the Brand House, and later the Wally Street Police Station. Between 1786 and 1790 Thibault designed all new public buildings and a number of private houses. From this date on Thibault's work is associated with that of Anton Enrith, a young sculptor and woodcarver from Freiburg, who had arrived as a soldier in the company's service in 1777, and with Hermann Schutte, a young architect and builder from Bremen who arrived in 1789. In 1790 the Dutch East India Company was virtually bankrupt and all work on public buildings and fortifications was stopped. Private commissions however, continued unabated. In 1788 Thibault had been promoted from lieutenant of engineers to captain and by 1795 to chief military engineer. Before and during the British occupation of the Cape, Thibault was obliged to carry out orders from Colonels Derleel and Gordon, which is an accomplished military strategist, he knew to be unsound. Cape under British occupation 1795-1803 It was in that capacity that he and Major Georg Cooler drew up an inventory of the assets of the liquidated Dutch East India Company in 1795, when the British occupied the Cape. Thibault lost all the privileges of rank and became a civilian once more. Major General James Henry Craig, who was acting governor at the Cape from 1795 to 1797, discovered that Thibault was compiling a map of the colony. Craig proposed that Thibault donate the map to him in return for the position of Royal Geographical Engineer, an offer which Thibault declined, also turning down a later offer of 100 guineas. Craig was succeeded by Earl McCartney and Major General Francis Dundas. In 1799 Dundas put Thibault in charge of repairs to military buildings as an architect. When Sir George Young, 5th BT 1731-1812 replaced Dundas as governor, he appointed Thibault as architect of military works under his aide-de-camp. Cape under Dutch rule 1803 to 1806 as he had sworn allegiance to England, Thibault went through a period of disfavor when the Cape was returned to the Dutch. Nevertheless, he was appointed inspector of public buildings, which allowed him to design all new public buildings, and supervise their construction and repair. Cape under British occupation 1806 onwards. Despite Thibault's having served under General J. W. Janssens in the field, Sir David Baird who had become acting governor, reappointed him inspector of public buildings. The British though preferred their Georgian colonial architecture and used their own architects, so that Thibault had very few commissions. He accordingly became a sworn surveyor in 1807 and in 1811 followed Jan Willem Wernick as government surveyor. The final years of his life were largely taken up with surveying properties on the road from Cape Town to Simons Town. In 1811 a special commission was appointed to determine the extent of land around Cape Town which was not in private hands and therefore regarded as disposable by the government. 
This led to beacons and boundaries frequently being moved by the commission over the objections raised by Thibault. His health rapidly deteriorated during this time and he died on November 15, 1815 of pneumonia, believed by his widow to have been brought on by his working in the cold and wet. He was buried in the Somerset graveyard, at a point now under the lower part of the Buat and Grat. Family On April 2, 1786, Louis-Michel Thibault married Elizabeth Van Chardy. June 11, 1820, daughter of an old Cape family. Children Katerina Everdina Thibault B. January 7, 1787, Spinster, survived to her 80s. Maria Joanna Louisa Thibault B. November 30, 1788, Spinster. Elizabeth Mainhardina Thibault B. September 12, 1790 M. March 14, 1814 to John Humphreys, Lt. 1st Battalion of Inniskillen. Katerina Maria Georgina Humphreys B. 1829. Louis Michel Adrian Thibault B. December 16, 1792 died in infancy. Thibault died in Cape Town on November 15, 1815. Buildings Even though his association with Enrith and Shuta was not a legal partnership, they worked together whenever possible, having complete faith in each other's professional competence and integrity. A fourth person, the woodworker J.J. J. Groff, worked with them on so many projects that he is normally included in references to the partnership. Except for Enrith, who was a confirmed bachelor and lived in a modest house in Bloem Street, the others helped each other out with modifications and additions to their respective homes. Groff's house at 14 Karam Street had changes by way of an upper story with cornice and architrave with fluted pilasters at the front door. Thibault bought the house at 17 here and Grat, site of the present Markham's building. Some of Thibault's important works Papenboom, Newlands for Dirk Jespert van Rien in 1787-88. Well depicted by J. Barrow's watercolor in Africana Museum, Johannesburg. Destroyed by fire in the 19th century. Freemasonry Lodge de Goat Hoop 1801-03, Stalblin, Cape Town. Served as the Cape Parliament 1854-1884. Still standing. Fountain on the Parade 1805-07. Demolished in 1814 as a good water articulation system had made it unnecessary. Drosty, Groffery in at 1804-05 still standing but renovated and modernized. Drosty, Talba 1804-7 restored after storm in 1822. Fire in 1934 and earthquake in 1969. Guardhouse at top of Government Avenue, Cape Town 1804 demolished. Customs House in the Buatank and 1814 used as public works department offices. Still standing. Conversion of Slave Lodge at top of Hier and Grat, Cape Town into government offices and Supreme Court 1814-15 still standing and occupied by the Izuko Slave Lodge. Buildings attributed to Thibault. Facade of Toke and Constantia for AGH Tube 1795. Breedenhof. No order parl for Gerhard van der Biege 1806 to 1812. Guardhouse, pavilions and gateway of slave enclosure Rustenburg, Ron de Bosch for Jan Hoetz 1806 to 1812. Koopmans de Wet House, Cape Town, Groot Constantia Wine Cellar, Cape Peninsula for Hendrik Cleet 1791. Front gable and gateways for Stellenberg now Stellenberg, Winburg for G. Renius 1791-92. Groot Constantia Homestead. Cape Peninsula for Hendrik Cleet probably 1792-93. De Wet House, Talba for Katerina Margarita Hugo widow of Jacobus De Wet, Ballatina, Talba 1815 for Wilhelmina Wagon, widow of Reverend H. W. Ballot. Manor House on Uitkaikwine Estate near Mulder's Vlade Doors carved by Enrith.